I really hope this isn't uploaded five weeks after the finale, but that's what I get for planning a vacation before the show even started airing. And just to mention, I have seen the finale already. I know who's in the final lineup. You don't have to tell me I was wrong because XYZ. This video is going to be presented without any context of the finale as it was always meant to. Anyways, the episode starts with a quote from the little match girl, they wanna be Chew so bad. That makes two Hans Christian Andersen quotes in a row and three 1800s fairy tales. It makes makes me scared that their first group photo shoot will be something similar to Kepler's, which I hated so much. You can like it, I just didn't. As established, three people will be saved by the vote and the other seven by the producer's choice. That means there will be two eliminations before the finale. I'm very certain that at the beginning of part two they said three people would be eliminated. Wonder what changed. Anyways, they revealed that the final score will be made up of pre-broadcast votes and live broadcast votes, with the live votes counting three times as much as the pre-vote. Honestly, to me, that kind of just sounds like Mnet wasn't getting the numbers they were hoping to announce. We spend a solid amount of time watching the girls move around and get resettled. Coco and Jimin, as the current one and two, become the unit centers and get to choose the members and songs. Their choice is between Into the New World, <laughs> Bad girl, good girl. Happiness. Latata. Dalla dalla. Black Mamba. Eleven. Fearless. And attention. These are all debut songs of top girl groups across generations, but no lachata. FX besties, you will always be famous regardless. Jimin wanted Latata and Pri selected Jiyun for main vocal and Sujung for main dancer, but her second place ranking means Coco gets to go first, and it quickly becomes clear that they have the same plan in mind. Coco selects her members in the following order. As the two alternate, I will just present their full lineup to avoid confusion. Her first choice is Jiyun, knowing she needed to secure a solid main vocal candidate quickly. Sujung follows, as both Coco and Sujung are great dancers, her strategy is probably focused on one of Sujung's other skills, despite picking her as a main dancer. Following her is Juwon, so now Coco has all the main dancer candidates in one team. Up next is Jungun, the commentary they present makes it clear that Coco and Jimin wanted very similar teams. Her final spot goes to Yuju, and we know that this is going to be a song with a strong rap between the two of them. Jiyun scares Coco, which is infinitely funny considering she was Coco's first pick, but it makes sense because Jiyun is very straightforward and blunt when it comes to performances and each person's strengths and weaknesses. As for Jimin, as soon as Coco announces her first pick, she changes her strategy. When she picks Fuko first, she confirms that she's prioritizing a main vocal candidate, which is interesting because Jungun was also available and would have fit Jimin's Latata vision more. I wonder what they haven't been showing us behind the scenes. Her second pick is Sarang. I think she said she wanted a strong dance candidate somewhere around here. Makes sense because right after that she picks Sebi, but she had a chance to pick Juwon for Sarang's spot, so I think Jimin had already accepted she wouldn't be getting the girl crush team and accepted her team would lean more towards elegance. Which is probably why her fifth pick is Mai, a strong dancer with an elegant image. The last person standing is Gyuri. While I think they've both underestimated her potential contribution to the team, I think it's fair that they were both trying to build a group that suits Latata and Gyuri would stand out visually. Jimin had a backup plan, which I am a fan of. Like I said, it's clear her choices were leaning into another aspect of Latata as a song. They each get 10 minutes to deliberate on which songs they want, both teams want Latata. I think it would have been more fun for Jimin's team to do it since a majority of her team hasn't been given a chance for a song like that. Coco officially picks Latata, but so does Jimin, which means she's forced to choose something else. Jimin did didn't want into the new world, but her team did. If you ask me, she should have gone for something else with a stronger image. As proven by Universe Ticket, even if it's the better performance, Pure and Innocent rarely, if ever, wins against Powerful. I think Black Mamba, Eleven, and Dala Dala all would have been better choices. However, I think the existence of Into the New World happiness and attention as choices shows that the producers are still open to some variety in concept. Most of the debut songs are on the crush, teen, mature, dark side of things. Happiness and Into the New World bring a bright, innocent concept into the mix. They could have gone with irony. So bad. Boom, boom, boom. 
Bumbaya. Bumbaya. Yeah, 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 Bumbaya. Fire. The list goes on if they wanted to push the girls towards the girl crush concept. Latata team's part distribution goes pretty smoothly until it's time for the chorus and post chorus. It's between Jungun and Jiwon. Jiwon wants to avoid Shuha's part because it's too high. Jungun offers to split the part more evenly between them and take over Shuha's part. Jiwon ultimately decides to do what's best for the team. I think this team misunderstood the parts in Latata a little bit. If I did my own distribution, it would be very different. Jimin suggests parts for Fuko and Gyuri, clearly pegging them as the main vocals of the team. Fuko says they should all be greedy about their own parts because this is an individual test. Also says Jimin should do the intro because she's the center. I think these teams are accidentally performing another producer-made test because now Sebi wants the intro but can't because she's not the team center. Jimin is very much still viewing this as a team test and I wonder if that's from the security of being a fan favorite. All the girls whose ranks have been slipping or floating show much more greed for parts except for Mai. Gyuri, Fuko, and Sebi discuss the dance break. First time we get to see Gyuri get assertive trying to prevent this from becoming Jimin's song with five backup dancers. Gyuri prevails and Sarang and Mai get the dance break. Jimin was very willing to relinquish parts as a leader, but I think that came back to bite. Latata team discuss themes and story. Soo Jung's biggest strength is her choreography background, but it's not necessary for a girl group. If this were a smaller company with less resources, she would be the perfect asset, but her biggest advantage over the other main dancer candidates is something an outsider can provide. Sujung says something to the effect of, Coco, you should share a lot of ideas, but then the rest of the team, except Coco, all have an idea that they share immediately and Coco just looks happy to be there and participate. Again, I think this team has in a way fundamentally misunderstood the function of a leader. She clearly chose this team thinking they provided something she lacks, and if one of those Things is performance ideas, then I don't think she should be tasked with coming up with ideas. However, as the leader, it should be her responsibility to analyze what her team comes up with and make the final decision of what gets included in the performance, even if it means cutting or keeping something the rest of the team doesn't agree with. In the self-evaluation, Latata team impresses. Jimin says that Coco showed off the vibe of the song well with her intro and that she pulled off the center overall. Sebi also adds that Coco's color matched her team well. Into the New World is a different story. Jungin tactfully tries to ask if the team is satisfied with the distribution, which Gyuri answers she's not. Jiyun then calls her out and says that out of anyone, she can't say that. She had so many parts, Jiyun almost thought she was the center until the chorus, and if that's so, then there's a problem. Jungin also adds that their center didn't shine the most, and Yuju questions why Jimin yielded so much. Koko and Sujung both comment on how the team clearly lacked a sense of team spirit and were performing very individualistically. Ironic. <laughs> Koko and Yuju go up to Jimin to tell her to be more greedy, and we find out that Gyuri went up to Jiyun to tell her she wasn't satisfied with her parts before the self-evaluation. I'm not sure what narrative exactly we're concocting here for Gyuri, but I'm gonna say I get her. This is the one time she's behaved selfishly, and it's right when she's scared she'll lose out on the final because she hasn't been able to showcase herself. I do think she needed to examine why she still wasn't satisfied when she got the most lines, but I think it would probably be because she still didn't think her parts showcased herself. There's a difference between getting a lot of parts and getting good parts, and also, being a teenager does mess with your brain sometimes, and I can definitely see this being her mind twisting the fact that the other girls did really well in their parts, and that made Gyuri view those parts as better than her own. Not seeing the forest for the trees type of deal. We then cut to the live feed so we know the performances can't be too far behind. Hanbin is so awkward, oh my god. I'm not gonna blame him because he's literally a rookie, he shouldn't have been put in this situation to begin with, they really should have planned their storyteller better. But this means we finally get to see the inter with the mentors starting with Latata. The girls start a physical presentation with poster board to explain their stage idea. Coco starts presenting and Sujung stops her so they can do their group introduction. At this point I'm thinking, oh cute, Coco is so nervous to start talking about the stage she forgot, but then after Coco stumbles over her words a little bit, Sujung takes over the presentation and listen, I get it. I also do something similar at work when I hear coworkers struggle with some aspect of a product they don't quite understand. But I also get Monica saying she understands why Sujung felt the need to take over but that she should have let Coco finish the presentation as the leader. But this whole thing gets spun into something way bigger than it is. All they needed to resolve this was just, 
acknowledge that Coco still isn't as comfortable speaking Korean as the team needs her to be and give her the time to accommodate that, which is what Monica told them. Coco feels bad that she hasn't been active as a leader and Monica says she has to be conscientious of the role she has as first strength and her obligations to fulfill it. It's literally be mindful of why you were invited to the section, but for survival shows. Sojung says Coco's reservedness put her in a difficult position. I think she forgets the role the language barrier also plays. Coco can communicate in Korean, but she's not Foucault level fluent. She still mixes Japanese in and needs time to think about how to say something, which I relate to completely because when I was hanging out with my Korean friends during my vacation, communication wasn't exactly smooth because both sides needed time to construct sentences before saying them. Honestly, this gave me bad flashbacks to Girls Planet where they brought in girls with little to no Korean language skills, no translators, just vibes, and then evil edited Chai Bing with it. Again, I think Soo Dong took the wrong approach and she blamed Coco for not being proactive, but she never thought maybe she and the other girls weren't being proactive towards Coco's communication accommodations. Every minute counts, but they could have found something that worked for them. The responsibility for the performance shouldn't have been solely on Coco, and they clearly worked better when she was given a critiquing role rather than a pure creative one. Trying to be a more active leader, Coco stays up with Juwon to help build her confidence in the performance. It's really sad to see what the show has reduced Juwon to, but I'm glad her emotions have at least calmed down. Do you guys remember how she was when she almost got kicked out of Island in the first vote? I am, however, struck with the sudden realization that she would probably do great in a group like Mimi Rose because she reminds me of Yoon Jia from Girls Planet. Mimi Rose come back soon, by the way. Moving on to the performance, we see my concerns in the background realized on stage. I feel like they fundamentally misunderstood how the song should be distributed. Idol has three main vocalists, essentially. Yuki is officially a lead, main, or sub-vocalist depending on where you look, but she's definitely as strong as a main vocal. The song wasn't distributed in a way that highlighted unique vocal tones and abilities, which is how all Idol songs are structured. They're very specifically made for Idol, who had six very distinct voices and skills. Jiyun covering Minnie's parts is good, both the most striking vocals with tones that stand out. Yuju doing the rap is also good, she is the most capable rapper left. Jongin should have shown off her deep vocals more by doing more of Uki's parts. The end of the bridge, Sujin's part, lost all impact when Sujung did it. It should have been done by Koko as the center or Jiyun as the main vocal. Even Jongin, I think, would have suited it more. Juwon and Jungun could have definitely had more parts. How are we in the semi-final and still doing reduced performances? She picked Sujung as a main dancer, but that didn't really come through in the performance. Coco pulled off the center well. There were certain parts where I wanted to see more of her, such as in the dance breaks and choruses. She didn't get as many killing parts as I expected, but overall, due to her placement in the intro and outro, her center role was well established. Jiyun didn't give her best performance here, but I also think the camera work ruined some of her parts. Overall, some of her parts were really well picked, like the second verse, but her bridge part was not for her. Jungin was probably the biggest standout. Her impact really came through in this performance. We got to hear her lower range, which was really nice and something we've been missing. But again, while I think her parts were overall well distributed, we could have gotten more if they fully utilized her strengths and advantages. Juwon was also a victim of bad utilization. She was really good in her bridge part, but I don't think her doing only Shuha's parts played to anyone's strengths. Great in her dance break though, but I just think she needs maybe a year and a half more of training to be truly debut ready. Something's holding her back on stage right now. Yuju's rap was good, even though she kind of choked a little bit in the middle of it. I would have liked to see a bit more attitude from her, something to really sell the performance, like she's truly living it, not just performing it. I found her vocals a bit underwhelming in the first verse, and I just don't really notice her as a dancer. I think she hasn't been given enough of a challenge in her training career to truly find where she excels. Yes, she's a good rapper, but what's her identity? Maybe that sounds like just parroting what the producers have said before, but I really felt it in this performance. She's a good rapper with the makings of a great one, but she won't find who she is as a rapper on this show. Juwon was horribly underutilized as a vocalist here. She wasn't right for the Latata part, she was just the only one left. But she was good in the bridge, second after Jungin for that. I liked her dance break as well, but it felt a bit crowded. I wish they could have utilized the stage more and spread out a bit to let her breathe. Su Jung should have been great in the stage, but she got all the wrong parts, all the wrong focus, and her interpretation was just wrong on her killing part. She went for a soft and delicate when every iteration of Latata has that killing part as confident, teasing, alluring. She's supposed to be almost mocking you when she asks who's scared. Honestly, the closest analogy I can find is a snake targeting its prey, but Su Jung was giving prey. Disappointing. She should have been great. My ranking for this stage is Jungun. She finally lived up to what she established in the entrance and signal song tests. Coco, she truly shined in her parts and definitely left an impact. 
Jiyoon, her vocals were good, really good in most of her parts, but she needed a better distribution. Juwon, her lackluster lines held her back, but when she got good parts, she made them work. Yuju, just lacking that identity. She has the skill, she just needs to figure out who she is on stage. Sujung, just an overall disappointing stage for someone so skilled. One thing you'll notice very quickly in the judges' feedback is that there is no criticism. There are, in my opinion, definitely things worth being critical about, but the producers are all positivity. If they don't have anything nice to say, they just don't say it. So Taehyung says, Everyone's singing and dancing was on point and they were really cool, conveyed expressions well, everyone looked like a flower because that was their stage concept, etc. He specifically mentions how Coco didn't have it easy as the leader but she really showed off her center potential while Yuju had especially good facial expressions. Monica adds a lot of flowery language about the stage theme and says Jiyun and Jungun were the most memorable as vocalists who also proved their dance skills. She also mentions the background and praises Soo Jung for making communication possible. It's very clear the mentors are choosing their words carefully. Hanbin then asks Vivian to share a few words as well. She compliments the visual, says Jiyun really shines when she sings and that she's capable of many concepts with star potential. She also praises Juwon, saying up until now she's considered her to be only a dancer but acknowledges her unique voice. Semi-final. I guess now it makes sense why we haven't seen much feedback from Vivian aired. She really focuses in on the vocals, and I just don't think the show cares that much about vocals if it's not their designated vocalists. I also believe they were instructed to keep things positive so they don't get accused of attempting to influence the live vote. Maybe malicious compliance kicked in and they decided to still only praise the girls they like because there were no comments on Sujong or Yuju's actual performances. They are my bottom two for this performance, so maybe it also just has to do with them not wanting accusations of favoritism or backhanded compliments if they accidentally slip into real feedback. We'll see in the next stage. So for the Into the New World interim, we see Jimin take a stand after the self-evaluation performance and express her thoughts on the teamwork or lack thereof so far. Kyuri takes the initiative to apologize for her greed and offers to redistribute her parts. I'm going to argue that's more maturity than most would show. She was very understandably scared that this would be her only chance to save herself from elimination and that fear took over, but she was level-headed enough to recognize that her worries do not supersede the team, a momentary lapse of judgment that she clearly regretted. Taeyang tells them that a new dance break isn't enough of a change and they have to consider how the musical changes contribute to the performance. All the mentors sit down and help the girls develop their performance with suggestions of adding point moves from the show to the dance break to better tell the story of the stage. I saw some people question why they sat down with Into the New World and not not Latata, but I think they probably helped both teams develop their performances. They were just telling two very different stories of how the stages came together. Latata had the overflowing with ideas, leader doesn't contribute enough, internal conflict. Into the New World had the two focused on distribution, no real stage concept, internal conflict gets resolved without enough stage planning. It makes sense that they would show the mentors helped them develop the stage, but not Latata, especially because the mentors suggested a pretty important aspect of the performance. Speaking of which, the performance starts with a VCR showing the girls journeys through trainee days, including account of how long they've been trainees. The remix is basically a mix between the original and ballad versions of Into the New World. I think a lot of impact was lost by giving it such an extended ballad intro where they each did two lines. I did not like Jimin or Mai's voices here. They were much better in the dance segments, but in the ballad part, it was really grating and even pitchy to me. I hope they never do that again. They both have strong nasality issues, and I really wish a competent vocal coach would help them, especially Jimin because even her speaking voice sounds really congested and she needs help opening up her nasal passage when she sings. I'm not saying she needs to change her speaking voice, but if she wants to be a versatile vocalist, she needs to fix her singing technique. Cutie was a respite and even Sebi surprised me with how well she pulled off her part there. Sarang and Fuko then made sure the second half was much better vocally. When the actual proper performance started, a lot improved. Jimin and Mai's vocals especially. Jimin was a really good center, but this is clearly not her concept. She defaulted to her classic expressions, but and it took me out of the performance a bit. But when she did let herself express the concept, I felt she did really well. Fuko was definitely tagged as the main vocal with her handling the ad-libs in the final chorus, which I think was a good choice. I would have liked her to share a bit with Kyuri so we could get more of the Jessica Taeyeon dynamic, but otherwise, no complaints about her execution. Like Jimin, she did default to her same expressions, the soft smile with half-lidded eyes. I was hoping we wouldn't get that this time around since it doesn't really suit the song, but overall her performance was 
great, expressed the song well, and really solidified her as a vocal candidate. Beauty was probably my favorite in this performance because this is a song tailored to her. Strong vocals, innocent concept, strong choreo. The only place where she felt lacking was in her stage presence when it wasn't her part. I would catch her in the corner and she felt really nervous, but I think that was more the pressure of the situation being she knows she's an elimination risk in votes. Otherwise, I only wish we got to hear more of her ad-libs, but that's about it. Sarang was very nice on stage, her vocals were good, her stage presence was good, dancing was good. Really glad we're back to seeing how consistent she is as a performer. Especially because she's been clear since Whistle that high notes aren't her strength, so it's really nice to get confident and consistent Sarang back. Mai was fine, I really didn't like her vocal delivery in the ballad section, but she pulled off her line in the performance section well. Her dancing is nothing to complain about, but it does feel like her explosive stage presence has really been reduced in part two. Which is a shame, because that's her biggest strength. Sebi is another person who was in her element. I intentionally left her for last because I think this might have been a nail in the coffin for her. Not because she did badly, but because she did too well. She's not the center, but she can't help her stage presence being overwhelming, and she really took over the center position during the dance break. If my theory about the producer's goal being a sense of balance between main and lead positions is correct, this proved that she can easily overpower Jimin's center presence, except in a very limited range of concepts. It's really weird to say the producers might not want someone for being too good at what they do, but here we are. If they want a balanced lineup where there's no fight over who's in what position, this performance would be it for Sebi. As for my ranking within this stage, Beauty, I feel like she could have been a little bit more greedy, ironically, and shown off more, but everything she showcased on stage is what makes her a great performer and my favorite of this performance. Fuko, she could have been pushed more in the camera work, but her vocals brought the whole thing together. Sebi, she's a great performer and what she lacks in skills, she makes up for in pure charm, but still not enough to overcome her unrefined skills completely. Sarang, great to see consistent Sarang back, but she played it a little too safe this time around. Jimin, she did her job as a center and leader well, but we have got to get those vocals fixed if we're going to be giving her lines in ballads and more stripped back songs. Mai, similarly to Jimin, the intro just highlighted her biggest problems vocally. Her impact, her strongest quality, was lacking to me and everything combined just came out to a weak performance to me. One of the better actors in the intro though. Moving on to the producer feedback, 24 says that as much as this was self-made, he thinks the girl's intentions were obvious. He wasn't the biggest fan of the intro concept when it was suggested, but he understood it on stage. In general, he summarized the stage by saying it reminded him of when he started making music. Jimin was the only one to get a personal shout out, saying she started the song off really well, which helped them get into the stage. Lee Jong says the stage felt very honest, and she was the most touched when Sarang sang her part. She also complimented Sebi on her immersion in the stage. Taehyung agrees about the honesty of the stage and says the emotions were what he was the most immersed in. He compliments Gyuri on her improvements in the stage, despite her already high starting point. He also compliments Mai on her vocal improvement in such a short time, and he particularly mentions the effort put in and notes that as an important aspect of an idol. He adds that Fuko's high notes at the end were particularly touching. The compliment for Mai's vocal improvement is deserved, at least for the second part of the stage, but I just did not like them in the ballad portion. After the vote closed, the mentors avoid the question of who they think should advance. Our final reprieve before the ranking results is a VCR of the girls having a sleepover. Yuju and Jungin perform spicy, there's a like Uwa cover, final love song performance, the babies are put into very conservative pajamas, which Sibi is not a fan of. They bring out a lie detector, but the only questions asked are if Jungin is still uncomfortable with Jiyun. Light detector says she isn't lying when she says she's not. Jiyun is asked if she really didn't hear Jungin calling out for her. Jiyun says she really didn't, but the light detector said she did. I'm on her side in this because just listen to the volume strength of everyone at the time. Jungin was really quiet and everyone else spoke up. They play video messages from the girls. Fuko speaks to Gyuri, Gyuri to Juwon, Jungin to Jiyun, Jiyun to Jimin, Jimin to Sebi. Sujung has a very emotional letter to Yuju where she tells her to never give up and always believe in her ability to debut. They then go to sleep in the main practice room. Jimin reveals Sebi cried in her letter to Coco, which is when they decide to air that portion. Sarang also calls out Sebi for falling for the new girl Coco when she, Sebi, Jungin, Juwon, and Foko all trained together for a long time before the show. They also discuss what people outside the show talk about and reveal who in their life likes who. Foko, Jimin, Sebi, and Jiyun get the clearest declarations of support from the other girls' lives. They don't air the letters from Coco, Sarang, Yuju, Juwon, or Kyuri. That brings us to the survivor announcements. We start with the top three in votes. In first place, with 3,234,171 votes, 
slash points is, no surprise, Bang Jimin, who becomes our first finalist. Hanbin also reveals that she is the producer number one, which I'm guessing is based on the combined scores for these three performances. For second place, they do a fake out, having everyone assume it will be Jiyoon. In second place, with 2,646,246, I just realized how suspicious that number looks, but I'm not knows they can't get away with that anymore, is actually Jungeun. I am of the opinion that she was definitely out of the top three in the interim vote reveal, probably fourth, so fans managing to push her up into second is truly a feat. The candidates for third place are Coco and Jiyoon. The, th the third place contestant received 2,635,024 points, only 11,222 points away from second place, which reaffirms my suspicion that Jungeun wasn't there before the interim vote reveal. This contestant turns out to be Jiyoon, which is not too surprising given Coco was in fifth place in the interim, so our second official top three is thus Jimin, Jungeun, and Jiyoon, affectionately referred to by fans as Triple J. After a quick deliberation, the mentors begin announcing their seven passes. Now, I think we all know they knew who they would be passing as soon as the top four was revealed, and this was for show. First up is Fuko who is then followed by Coco, placing them unofficially in 4th and 5th, which is what people predicted in the interim. Final member of the semi-final top 6 is Gyuri, shocking basically everyone. <laughs> I do think if it hadn't been for the votes, Jungin wouldn't be in the producer's top 6, so rank number 7 is who I think the producers originally had in 6th, and that is Sarang, also shocking everyone. People expected Sebi, who is officially rank 8, to take a spot in the top 6. Ranks 9 and 10 were both upsets and not surprising. In 9 is Mai, and following her, the final member of the top 10 and advancing to the final is Yuju. This means Sujung rank 11 and Juwon rank 12 miss out on the final and are eliminated. It was probably very conflicting to them. There's the relief of something they probably knew was coming and the disappointment of being so close. Well, I do think they just eliminated two very talented and well-rounded girls. This just solidified my theory that they were no longer in the running as of the first mission in part two. So Jung delivers a really touching speech where she cheers on all the finalists one by one, and it's nice to get some slight closure on the my drama in that way. The mentors top 10 also actually matched with the voted top 10, which I don't see enough people mentioning. Yes, the mentors having a say should mean talented girls surviving regardless of popularity, but there's really no untalented girls left now, not since part two started at least. Sujong and Juwon are a loss, yes, but any one of the girls would have been. If they'd been, say, 5th and 8th in votes, maybe the mentors would have chosen differently. Instead, we got a sense for the kind of lineup the mentors want to create, which tries to balance their preference with popularity. And I've seen some people speculate that the order they were called in was to create some tension, but I think this was a pretty accurate reflection of their wants. Fuko is needed in the lineup as a reliable leader who's also a solid vocalist and dancer, Coco fulfills the main dancer and main rapper position, and Gyuri is a stable all-rounder with a powerful voice to match Jungun's the way Fuko matches Jiyoon. I also find it very interesting that people put more emphasis on this being a The Black Label group rather than a Wake One group, which is what they'll actually be. I can definitely see them continuing to work with Vivian and 24 as producers for some b-sides, maybe even title tracks, but I don't really see Teddy contributing much beyond the first two title tracks and maybe a b-side. This has me considering that the group will lean more towards the sound we've seen with Eyes One and later Kepler, while Eyes One's concept was what defined their sound, I definitely think this group is likely to lean into house-based music. Eyes One did a lot of tropical house, some deep house, generally ventured into different genres of house, and made it sparkly. I can see them being an attempt from Wake One to fix their fumble with Kepler by giving them a title track more like Mask than anything Blackpink have put out. This also relieves them of some of that pressure to have a strong rapper slash rap line, which I don't think they've been aiming for anyways. I think we should expect something more like Google than the boots than Blackpink's Duru Duru. Get it, Dubai, in the night, boo.